good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of the Destroy the Stamps podcast. Doing a review, quick review. We just came from the game, uh, the Knights and the Warriors game. Uh, Knights winning that game despite missing Kalen Ponga and uh, Tyson Rizal. They did a very good job. Defense was excellent. Well-deserved win. Warriors a lot of work to do. We'll get to them at the end, but... Yeah, we're just going to do a review of uh, rugby from April and also this round as well. It's just about over. Uh, I'll start with, um, also I've got my mate VJ. Sorry, VJ. I forgot so to guys, how are you? I'm a VJ Manly fan. Uh, yep, uh, always the loyal to Manly no matter what. Loyalty matters, That's doesn't it. it? Right. Yeah. Not like those bloody Man City supporters. Disgraceful. <laughs> Plastic, plastic. Absolutely plastic. More plastic than Kim Kardashian's. Uh, okay, I'll keep it down. <laughs> but, you know, like, all right, all right. So, back on tra- track because we got to get keep moving today. All right, so, um, VJ, mm-hmm. what do you reckon um, so far? Interesting uh, month of rugby league. Yeah, very yeah. interesting. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of big movements around the season, around different teams. Um, injuries have been very impactful to, to certain teams especially with Brisbane Broncos on Friday. Uh, that Adam Reynolds injury is is super, super disappointing for, for their faithful three months, bicep rupture. Mm. Um, those are the type of injuries that just like, they change a whole team of season. And, and that's a very important player, you know? Yeah. Brisbane, Brisbane have a really young core. But they need that experience. Yeah, they're headed by experienced players like um, Carrigan and, and Reynolds, so they need those players in there. So with that, Adam, us. It's going to be hard. very tough, and and I always thought Penrith and Broncos were the, the benchmark of um of the comp, and the rest of the teams were kind of like chasing by. But now with that injury to Brisbane, it's going to be a tough. They kind of they kind of bring it down to the pack, and Penrith look like the the, the team to be. They look like they've already got one hand of the trophy. If I'm being honest, even though they're not a first at the moment, but still. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if they finish first at the end of the season, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, definitely. Still early days. Only the second month of rugby. Uh, we're coming up to do... This month is just a build-up to the origin period. A lot of players will be trying to push their place in New South Wales and Queensland player teams. A few injuries already as well, like you've mentioned. So there's a few spots up for grabs. Um, what do you reckon? Uh, so, speaking of Penrith, uh, brilliant lot on... Uh, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Gee, uh... Can someone stop the juggernaut at the moment? That's the thing, man. They just look like, no matter who they lose or what difficulties they go through, it's just that next man up mentality and it just just keep going each and every week. System players, system team. Um, one thing I do want to say is, like like you said, it's only the second month of, of the NRL, so it's really hard to say who's the real contenders and who's the real contenders. Um, I would say Penrith are a certified team that's going to be there in September, maybe even October again. But the, the rest of the bunch, you really don't know because, you know, just like what happens in Brisbane on Friday, like injuries can happen at any time. The origin period is a very tough period mm-hmm. to get exactly. through. Like, um, it's a long season and we're only, we're not even halfway through it. So calling teams pretenders and contenders, it's, it's really what hard to do right now. But there's one team I put my money on that will definitely be there easily by prelims is Penrith Panthers. Yep, absolutely. And uh, they missed Cleary for the most part of it as well, and they're still doing really yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. That just shows you the, the strength and the bench strength they have, they've had. They've got um, also Melbourne Storm winning some close games, being a bit, they're getting the results, they're getting the points. They are currently first, provided the Sharks don't lose to the Dragons, they will remain in first place. Um, so, so provided the Sharks don't win today, uh, the Sharks will be playing the Dragons in uh, Cronulla. If the Sharks win by any margin, they move to first place. But if the Sharks lose to the Dragons, then the Storm stay in first place. Storm, definitely much better than last year so far, I reckon, Thompson. They've uh, got a bit of mongrel in them. Uh, they will miss Pappenhausen for a bit, which is yeah. another loss. But they're getting the results at the moment. Exactly. I think they look, um, they look better than last year. Uh, the thing with Melbourne is that their forward pack is, is what... I can see as a weakness for them going into like big matches against Penrith and Broncos and and um, Shark. Oh, not Shark. Sharks have a pretty weak forward pack as well. Maybe Roosters. But Roosters is exactly so. That's the only kind of fault I'll give them. Hmm. But as a team, they work really, really well. That spine is probably the best spine in the world when in when fit. 
we're talking about Harry Grant, Jerome Hughes, Monster, and Papinazzo. That like those spines are, are, are as good as that. Yeah. Um, with Granada though, uh, looking at their draw from next week, they've got they've got Melbourne away, then they've got uh, Roosters at Magic Round, then Penrith at home, and they've then got some Parramatta at Combat before they buy in round 14. So very very tough game. That's where you can really get a scope of if Sharks are, are the real deal or not. Yeah, probably not the Parramatta game because Parramatta will be missing Moses for a bit unless he comes back. I think he'll be back by round 13. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's what's been yeah. reported. Okay, so yeah. but yeah, that'll be tough. Power a different bunch with Moses. Oh, 100%, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a huge difference to it's that just team. Just with everyone's calling them flat track bullies. They're just, they're just beat. Whatever's in front of them, they're doing a good job of um, annihilating and winning and, and, and winning comfortably, exactly. That's what you got to do. Where Except for that Tigers loss in round two. That was a bit disappointing. Yeah, a bit definitely. concerning as well. But, um, yeah, uh, also, I'd say maybe Manly, your boys. Oh. Um, being a bit cl- um, being good in patches. Uh, mm. Good win against Penrith, uh, middle of April. Mm. But um, probably should have won that game against the Warriors. That uh, penalty was a bit dubious. But I'll take that point. <laughs> uh, you'll take that point as well, because that could come in handy as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, that loss against the Raiders on the weekend didn't help. A um, bit rusty against the Titans, but they got the point. Yeah. But... Um, Raiders game, I think they should have won that, really. 20 points up, and yeah, that, that would be disappointing with that. That's the thing with Manly this year, I've seen. They're better than last year so far, but some some of the games, like the Dragons game we went to, that they lost, they were disappointing. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying the Warriors were better. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there's the games that they probably could have won. The Raiders and the Dragons game, they could have played, definitely could have played better, and yeah. uh, should have probably won those games. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a season where I feel like we're a different team ago I'd, I'd say a slight improvement but we've still been very very patchy and that kind of soft underbelly that we have where we kind of check out of games after we get to a lead is it's still there and it's just something that you can't take into you can't you can't remain consistent for the whole season and, and so that Raiders game I think we had coming for us because even before that we we've blown leads against Warriors and managed to escape with the draw. Mm. We lost against uh, we, we lost against uh, Eels after leading 14-0. Yeah. Um, so we've, we've blown quite a few leads up to this match. And that match, if that's our wake-up call, then uh, it's going to be it's going to be a tough season. But like, I'm happy with what we're doing. I think we're sitting in a in a good spot. We've had some hard opposition: Roosters, Para twice. Um, uh, Penrith Warriors at, away from home, like it hasn't been the, the softest draw. So we've done we've done pretty well. We've done better than they, I expected to be honest. But um, mm. it's definitely some work to do. Yeah, a lot, a lot to do still. Yeah, but definitely much better than promising signs than last year. I'd say. Oh yeah, hundred percent. We're a better team than what we were two years ago. Um, I really want us to push for top four. Like. I know, I know. Top eight isn't even certified yet, but I think we're, we've got a roster where we should be pushing the top four. When we have performances like what we had against Penrith and um, that first half performance against you guys as well, that that's like that's like top four performance, right? Mm. It's just a matter of being consistent, right? That's, that's what you got to do. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I'll see how that goes and um, see how that goes. The season progresses. Uh, what's that other team? Um, yeah, Sharks had an easy draw, but you got to take your chances, eh? Yeah, they're, they're beating whatever is in front of them. That's what they're going to do. That's it. And I'll uh, we'll see how they go in the next couple of we'll weeks. Get a, we'll get a better judgment of them when they have their next buy in about four or five weeks and they're playing like some top-level teams that they got coming up. Definitely. Speaking of um, speaking of some top-level teams, Roosters, a bit patchy to start in the first month, but the last two games have been seriously good. A mm-hmm. uh, really comprehensive win in Brisbane over the Broncos. Uh, yeah, sad what happened to Reynolds, but yeah, they did the job and they absolutely mauled uh, the Dragons on Anzac Day. Yeah. That probably could be the Dragon season because teams have, uh, there's that stat, you know, where the teams yeah, can see 50 points. 50, you don't win the comp, yeah. Yeah, no, so true. that could possibly be uh, Dragons' chances of the Premiership um, terminated there. Um, oh, yeah. But Roosters, definitely, they're clicking at the right time, I reckon, getting some points. Our last two weeks have been impressive. What do you reckon about Roosters? I like that team, I mean, on paper, They've got a, a world class roster. I mean, you're talking about internationals, uh, state players, prep players, Dalian winners. Like, it's a star side side. It's just since winning their back to back, it's just been really, 
really inconsistent and a lot of underachievement from Robbo and his side. Um, I know one of those is a little bit better, man. Um, they've started all right. It's just about it's just about maintaining through this origin period and into the last part of the season. Yeah, definitely. Um, also, there's teams that have been a bit patchy this year. Uh, Raiders, um, they lost to Malfogarty. Mm. Uh, what's it called? Eels, um, they really missed Mitchell Moses. Yeah. And um, yeah. there's other teams that have been a bit patchy. Bulldogs, I reckon, have been um, pretty good. Oh, they've been the big improvers for sure. Yeah. Massive improvers so far. I think your improving sides are, are Donkeys, I'd say, um, I'd say Tigers. They, they look better than what they were. Even Dragons, but like... Dragons for sure, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, dolphins are, are doing really well so far. Mm. Um, punching above their weight for sure. Those key signings like Farnworth and Flegler are, are adding a lot to the team. I mean, those filler players like Max Platt, um, Trey Fuller, doing really, really well. So Dolphins fans should be should be excited for the direction they're going. 100%, 100%. The dolphins um, definitely have been impressive this mm. year so far. Yeah. And um, also, I think it was same same with them last year. They started off really well. Yeah, um, bro, they were like three and zero going into round four against that Broncos game last year. Yeah, um, but it's just about uh, you know their depth will get tested with injuries and those those maybe those players, period. Yeah, those players go to do a job. Hundred um, percent. Also, speaking of um, speaking of uh, teams that are just like up and down a bit, the top eight definitely. No one's running away yet. Huh. Still early days. Yeah. Um, Bulldogs are just put back to the Bulldogs. Um, Kickout's really having a good season. Yeah. Uh, not injured at the moment. Uh, Bulldog fans will be hoping he doesn't stay. He doesn't get injured at all. Crichton's made a huge difference. Crichton and, and I was going to say Curran as well. Two players that have been Josh Curran, yeah, yeah, really big for the Bulldogs this year. Crichton just brings that big game energy, that winner mentality, um, and and you can see like he's not one of those Penrith players that are just there. Or ex Penrith players, I should say, that are just there for a paycheck. They just, they actually, he actually wants to transform that club. And I respect that. Yeah, definitely. And um, Bulldogs, definitely in the coming years, will be there and abouts in the eights. I reckon mm. they will mm. be, they're definitely can, going to be a consistent threat. Yeah. This year, sure. I don't know, it's still early days, but. Um, they're doing well, they're doing well. Yeah. And uh, if we talk about their two losses, they've lost against Melbourne away from home. Not a, uh, not a big was, margin. Yeah, there. that was two points, I think. Um, and then they, they lost, lost the Rabbitohs, dubious yeah. one. Yeah, Rabbitohs was a dubious one. Sharks one where the kick out, kick out hitting the ref happened, where that was a bit controvers controversial. Yeah. They've had some, yeah, they've had, like, it hasn't been disappointing losses or losses that. Probably were, the first game was, the like, one they lost the oh, yeah, but, but after that. Yeah, first round, first round games, you can't really make a, a big yeah. But yeah, Dogs fans should be, should be proud so far. 100%. Um, teams that have been up and down started well, but they've been very, um, well, very clunky, I'd say, or a bit ordinary at times. Cowboys. Yeah. Started right. really well this year, but gee, they've been a bit, uh, they've been pretty bad the last couple of... Yeah, for sure. I think that Lukey injury, I think it was in like round three, round four, that kind of hurt them a bit, that hard edge that they needed. Mm. Um, and they've just had problems with... Uh, their forward pack mix, you know, bringing in Tamalola off the bench or on the bench, and then they got players like McIntyre and McKaylee who's been off and on from the reserves. So they haven't, you know, they haven't had a, a set forward pack that can get rolling on together. Um, and I also think um, I don't think Townsend is, is cut for consistent halfback game managing for footy. I think, I think they're going to try and blood Clifford back into the team to work with Jordan. Yeah, def definitely. Cowboys uh, got a lot of work to do. Mm. Uh, they did well two years ago, really surprised everyone, yeah. and uh, nearly made the finals, but they didn't um, do too well last year. Yeah. Patchy, they were on a good streak at the, um, towards the end of the season, but then fell off. Mm. This year started well, but then they've just been a bit... That's the thing I've realised, right? Because all these teams, they um, we've seen in previous years where they just leave it too late. And that's how that's why important, the importance of games at the start of the season before Origin mm. 1. Yep. You've got to bank those points. So that's why I was really frustrated with us losing against Dragons 100%. and losing against Raiders because those are games where we went in as heavy favourites. Um, the Raiders game especially, we got, we got off in the right direction with mm. 20 points up. A game against 
Eels also was a game that we kind of let slip away. But at the same time, they were in really good form then. So it wasn't the same as losing to a bottom eight team or bottom four team like the Broncos. Uh, sorry, the, the Dragons or, or the Raiders without Fergity. Yeah, absolutely. You got you got to make you got to make most of those games in before Origin one. You got to bank the points that you should be banking. 100%. Um, and, it, and it really pays off yeah. at the end of the season. It makes a end, yeah, especially if you if you miss the eight by what, like two or four points, you, you look, look at, at those games. games exactly, sure. exactly. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, so similar things with quite a few teams. Um, Titans, last couple of weeks, I'll be honest with you, mm. they have improved a lot. Sure, that, yeah. A couple of games you could say that could have gone their way. Mm-hmm. Um, they started off horribly, yeah. but um, they've really, they, they've come close on a few occasions. Future-wise, I reckon that doesn't look too bad, but um, just they just got it. It's just the points that yeah. they're not getting at the moment. Yeah. Um, got that win against the Warriors last week, which they deserved. I mean, uh, they, they were building up towards that win. To be fair, uh, they had a tight game against the Raiders, which could have gone their way, and tough game against you guys. They kind of give you guys a bit of a tough time oh, for, for some sure, reason. Sure. They score a lot of points for times. some reason, but yeah. they it, score a lot of points. It's just the defense hasn't been good. Yeah, it's just that's a lot of uh, a lot of work to do for Des Hasler, and um, we'll see what they can do in the future. But I think they're in an upward trajectory, but they shouldn't have been in this position where they need to look like they they need a rebuild or a, or a fresh mm. cleanup. They're they're a team that was always thereabouts when it came to like top ten, top twelve for mm. the last few years. Yep, I mean they were, they made the eight in twenty twenty one, so it's really weird why. They're all of a sudden wooden spoon favourites or, or near wooden spoon favourites. Yeah. Um, but I guess if we're looking in context of this season, they have been improving game by game. And you, you're, you're right, they have been unlucky in some games um, not to take the points. Yeah, exactly. And even the last night as well against the Storm. Yeah. Exactly. Possibly could have gone their way yeah. as well. Yeah. Only two points. It, it's their defence, man. They, they know how to score points. they got players like Brimson, who's playing good for you. Carpera. Fafida, Carpera. Um, even uh, ton of, ton of Boyd is back after his admission. He's playing better for you. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't get it with the times, but we'll the see. potentials there. It's just uh, probably some little things they've got to fix up. Yeah. Man. Um, also, uh, one team that's really had a rough run this year. Um, probably kind of carried on from last year. They were on, like well known. They were on, they were leading the comp after 12 rounds last year. Then they fell off famously, mm-hmm. missed the eight, and it's carried on to this year coach has been sacked and uh, they've got an interim coach in former Dragons player I think he was captain at one stage Ben Hornby yep, Hornby and um, yeah the, uh, very concerning a lot of um, issues going on the South Sydney Rabbitohs bottom yeah. of the table right now quite a few disappointing defeats mm. a lot of concern there for the Souths at yeah, the moment Rabbits. I mean wow what a I mean not that it was unexpected but I don't expect you, you to be think, this bad. Yeah, you'd think, yeah, you think, yeah, you wouldn't have thought it would have been this bad. And, and some, of the sh- some of the stuff that is kind of compounded off this, like the Ilias getting dropped and then breaking his leg in reserve grade. And now there's talk of him wanting to move away. Yeah, leg. Cam Murray's injury, um, the troll suspension, Cody Walker. The off field Everything just kind of compounded, compounded and it's, yeah. they, look, they look in a really bad position right now, I can't lie. At the moment, yeah, exactly. Possible clean out at the end of the season, maybe. Yeah, yeah I have mean, to be. It's, it's just like I can't imagine a team that has the likes of Cody, Jack Wyden, the Troll, possibly win a wooden spoon. Like that's pretty. It's pretty Damian disappointing. Cook. Yeah. I mean that that'd be really really bad. But um, at the moment it, it, it looks like they're in a really tough spot. And yeah. I think I think it's an ego thing, man. I feel like some players in that team. Yeah, definitely. You know, just have an ego and, and it's not working out for them. Don't want to play hard. Don't want to play the hard stuff. Yeah, definitely. And um, also, Latrell Mitchell, I mean, you can complain about um, maybe be, uh, fans being racist or what. Maybe some, uh, not many. Mm. But um, really, it's not down to racism. Um, it's um, just got to be honest. Even uh, your own fans are saying, like, even his own fans would be saying, like, it's just oh, yeah, for sure. ill-discipline. And, um, I mean, one fan was pretty uh, angry about uh, on the weekend, you know, like in the sheds, mm-hmm. he was smiling and celebrating, and, like smiling and all that, yeah. after such a disappointing defeat. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, it's just uh, you know, Walker as well. Uh, quite a few South fans are saying maybe we should drop them mm. or get them out of the team or drop them in reserve yeah. grade. Disappointing because he's got a lot of poten- uh, definitely got the superstar ability of Mich- uh, Latrell Mitchell, but mm. let himself down. Let himself down at the moment. At yeah. the moment, maybe they can turn around, but it looks very tough. 
for the Rabbitohs. It's one team I think it's not going to make. Uh, it's really not going to do much this year. And also, yeah. they got 50 points here put on them against the Storm. So yeah, that, supersti- cool. that superstition of uh, teams conceding 50 points <laughs> and uh, not winning the Premiership in this, uh, might continue. Yeah. So if you go by that, then the Dragons and Rabbitohs might be out of the Premiership contention. Yeah, I don't think anyone really even had them as a chance anyways. But yeah, if that wasn't uh, the nail in the coffin, then I would, yeah, I don't know what is but. Uh, uh, yeah, with Latrell's form, I think uh, people had called him a top-class fullback, but I never really saw it. I thought he was he's more a of a he's more of a moments player. Like he he lives for the he thrives in moments, and when momentum is going his way, he can really shine. But as a just as a fullback in general, I don't think he covers as many gra- as much ground as you know the the Dylan Edwards's, the Tedesco's, the yeah. Turbos. Um and yeah, he's explosive. He's got that kind of X factor, but you know it, it's how he uses it. He's, he's not been using it consistently in the last, I'd say, since round twelve of last year. Absolutely. Um, just um, yeah, hopefully things improve. I know he was injured, by the way, from round twelve. But like, you know, you just look at his whole Rabbitohs career; it's just been really up and down. Really up and down. Started all right, at the Rabbitohs, yeah, but yeah, it's just fallen off. Yeah, exactly. Um, speaking of teams, also that have been a cl- bit clunky, but they've got two back-to-back wins. The Knights. Yes, missing Ponga at the moment and yeah. Frizzell, but just grinding away, getting the points that exactly. you need to get. A um, few games, there was one game that they were really disappointing against the Bulldogs, but since that game they've looked okay, like they've just hung in there. Um, being gritty, they get they, they move up to, I think they move into um, ninth position with this win against the Warriors today. So, um, yeah, just getting the getting those vital points, just hanging in there. Yeah, exactly. Um, even some of the losses they had early this year, they didn't lose by too much, so it doesn't affect their points differential too yeah. much at the moment. So they're there and about, trying to back up a brilliant season last year yeah. that they had. What do you reckon about the Knights? I mean, uh, talking about like injuries that can impact your season, you know, Ponga leaving is is a big injury, and I forgot how long he's out, maybe like uh, two months, maybe, but. Yeah, that's a big injury. But like since then, they've they've won two games. You know, they've done really really well. Um, Armstrong is 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 a great fill-in and he's doing really well. Um, they've chopped and changed with their halves, but I think um, I think Hastings and Gamble has played really well um, in the last two weeks. Hmm. Uh, yeah, they're they're a weird side. I think they'll at the end of the season. I mean, it's hard to tell now, but they'll be. I reckon they'll be around that top eight cluster the bottom four the top eight club stuff yeah i don't know if they will make it i think there's better teams than them um but you know what i got respect that their, their faithful is, is very loyal to them their fans rock up to the games no matter what weather um, yeah today sixteen thousand yeah, in this weather exactly i respect it um and yeah they they'll just keep they'll be that team that will be up and down but if you're a top team, you're going to be scared going away to play them because they can cause an upset. Especially like when you remember last year that winning streak they had at home. Especially, yeah, yeah. Um, they were so tough at home. Beat some really good teams as yeah, well. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, beat the Storm there, and yeah, they beat the Storm yeah. early this year as well mm. over there. Yeah. But um, yeah, that they're they're a team that's going to be there and about. I reckon. Oh yeah. Um, also, another team I'd say. Uh, what do you? What's another team there? Um, We'll get to the Warriors. Nah, maybe a bit later. Maybe Sorry, later. guys, I'm being a bit salty here. Um, <laughs> uh, we, who uh, we missed? What's we missed? The... Um, I think we covered near the other one. Para, I guess. Para, yeah, let's touch on Para a bit. Yeah. yeah. What do you yeah. reckon about Parramatta? Um, good, decent start for the season. Unfortunately, Mitch Moses' is injury. Yeah, that kind of... That kind of... Put him in a shoot. I mean, like, since they played us... In round uh, three, round or three. Yeah. Um, they they won in a in a great game. It was a fantastic game. But then that Mitch Moses injury pretty much messed them up. Um, you know they won. I think one out of four since then. And now they're in the bye and they've lost Cotto as well for a few weeks as well. Yeah. So yeah, they're in a they're in a bad situation. Um, a Could lot have won of, that manly game at Brookie, to be honest. Yeah, because yeah, it just Sivo just had a massive brain fade. Yeah, exactly. I think I think with Para, a lot of a lot of fans are, are questioning Brad Arthur's tenure. You know, he's been there for 10, 11 years. He served him well. Took him to the grand final in twenty twenty two and multiple finals appearances. But it's about has he hit his ceiling? 
already. Because you know? Para fans have like, like most fan bases would have high expectations from their teams. Oh, for sure. I mean, a team that's made the finals as, as many times as they have over the last 10 years and still haven't come. I mean, close. they've come close. 2022 grand final is the closest they've been. But, uh, you know, it's been a long drought for them, 36 years. Yeah, I mean, the 80s, um, Rick Astley was doing the Rick roll back then. Yeah, it's been a long time for them. And TV was uh, black and white, was it? No. <laughs> no, no, okay, no, no. I think it mean. might have been. Yeah, Elvis Presley was, was doing pre-game shows. Right? No, I mean, he was dead, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he was dead, dead. No, no, no that's you too know, far. You, you know what I mean. It's been a long time for Para, and um, they just they just want that premiership, and BA might have just hit his ceiling in 2022, and, and they're doing a big calm down since then. Yeah, if um, I mean, if they don't somehow make the final or close to the final, yeah. Question marks really do arise. But then, who do they go for? Because apparently they've lost out on Wayne Bennett. They 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 rejected any kind of interest of Wayne Bennett publicly a few days ago. Yeah. And now Souths are trying to get Wayne Bennett back. So who who do they go for? Who's that upper standard to yeah. Brad Arthur? I thought I thought trying to get Bennett was a smart idea. And even as a Manly fan, I was kind of concerned if they got Bennett, maybe they can do it. But now there's a lot of they're in a they're in a in a hard position. Do they? commit to BA mm -hmm. or what do they do yeah that's it um, it's going to be interesting to see especially when Moses comes back in a couple in a round or two yeah. what happens there at Parramatta yeah. and um, so just at the moment who, who do you reckon the, like, the three most impressive three or four most impressive teams so far this year impressive so I would say um, I would say uh, okay we'll go we'll go doggies first and Bulldogs are showing an upward trajectory to what they've been in the last two years. Full kudos to them. Even with Drew Hutchison in the halves. He uh, cops a lot of flags exactly, online. Yeah, he's still, they've still managed to... And he does well. He's a great defender as well. He gets too much hate. But um, they've done really well to hang into games. And they're showing a, a really tough kind of mentality. And I respect that from them. Looks like they've done a lot of work in the offseason, yeah, actually. They exactly, did some training. Sure, they're looking much fitter. I'd also say... Um, really hard man it's been such a weird competition a lot of teams Storm up and down. I reckon have been impressive and just yeah. getting the results done yeah I could uh, you could say Melbourne I'd say I'd say Melbourne have been pretty quality pretty class it started off the season really well by beating Penrith in round one Sharks have been good till now like yeah Sharks are beating been pretty good I'd say yeah. I respect that Roosters um, are up there yeah and I think Dolphins are doing well to, to stay in the top four Definitely. and I, I know uh, this might sound biased but I reckon Manly have done well considering what what we were expected to do, you know? Yeah, I mean? definitely. <laughs> like we we won five games and we've been in cruise control for most of those wins, mm -hmm. and we still managed to get points. Um, it's just about getting that soft attitude and mentality away from us and, and becoming more ruthless. And I think we'll, you'll see that team show up later this season. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, still very early days. This month, and I reckon June and July will be huge months. Oh, yeah, They'll sure. set up the season for every yeah, team. Yeah, after, after Origins, like, it's nearly a whole new competition, to be honest. Yeah. So much changes and so much happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, vital periods coming up for a lot of teams. And last but not least, uh, also just before we get to the Warriors, uh, I really don't want to get to them, but <laughs> we will. Um, what's it called? The Dragons. Man, when they're on, they're on. Yeah. But when they're off, they really are off yeah. but definitely better than last year Yeah. but gee when they are on they are really good like the Warriors game two, week, two or three weeks ago uh, the Manly game well Manly that game was pretty I'll, I'll be honest with you that game was pretty rusty from both teams Yeah, yeah. but Dragons were just better on the day yeah. um, they were pretty good uh, there was one game they were pretty good in I don't I forgot which game it was but yeah, they, you guys? I mean yeah I already mentioned them they were, oh, they were excellent there yeah um, there was one game early in the season they were good in but um, then they had those really bad games. One like against Titans, the Dolphins. Titans around one. Yeah, Titans yeah. around one. And then um, the Dolphins game, they were horrible. Uh, not even getting a point there. And yeah. really horrible against um, the, what do you call it, the Roosters last week. So, yeah, I mean, what, oh, Dragons. Um, definitely maybe some signs. They, they might get better in the future. Like, it's going. it seems like it's the right path at the moment. But, gee, they're on and off, aren't they? Yeah, they are. But we'll, we'll see how they go. I think they'll be all right. Uh, Shane Flair has done a, a good job in getting the most out of certain players like uh, Leilua, Mosuli. They've got a big team. They've got a lot of big players in that team like Sua, Leilua, um, their forward pack, um, got, you know, Eisenhuth and some real big boppers. Um, 
Yeah. And yeah, we'll see how they go. I understand. And last but not least. Up the was. Yeah, up the was. But uh, gee, uh, Warriors looked okay in the first month. Not mm. too bad. They got a good win to start April against the Rabbitohs, who really aren't doing too well. Yep. Very lucky to come away with one point against the the uh, Manly Seagulls. Yep. Well, as Glenn, L- uh, Glenn Lama says, the Manly Sea Eagles. He says it with so much emphasis, man. Yeah. He heard that guy when he says it. The Sea Eagles. I do love the Sky Sports commentary. It's really good. Yeah, like so much emphasis. Yeah. That guy just looks amped. Like little John, eh? Yeah, facts. Ah! <laughs> but, um, yeah, Warriors, um, two last two weeks, uh, yep. even today as well. Especially against the Dragons. God, that was awful. Um, they're really targeting the right edge. Dallin's um, being criticised a, a bit as well. Last year, there was a bit of a... That wasn't exploited as much. Mm. But this year, kind of started from the Manly game. But, uh, you know, Dallin's side of the defence, the right edge, they call it. Yeah. Teams are targeting Dallin. Dallin rushes on defence. Sometimes it, can, it, uh, like it can help. And he can get an intercept or maybe get a quick tackle or stop the play. But... Um, on a lot of occasions this year, the last, especially in the last two or three weeks, uh, especially I mean probably the two games before, yeah. it's been exposed. Mm. Um, they've been missing tackles, quite a few errors, uh, just there were silly penalties as well. Yeah. Ill discipline costing them. Pressure on Montoya as well. He's been a bit rusty. Yeah. Um, I feel like the attack's just been a bit up stifled and, and a bit one-dimensional since Metcalf left. Mm, Esther seems to be scrambling for ideas and options. Tomorrow's not, not been effective. Yeah, exactly. And uh, no Chanel Estavita. Um, Neil is out with another injury. Yeah. But, um, yeah, definitely some pressure on the Warriors. Three back-to-back losses. I think it's the first time since 2022 they've had three back-to-back losses. So uh, it's going to be some pressure. Uh, okay, the points differential isn't too bad for the Warriors. It's still positive, but yeah. you've got to get the wins early on, like you mentioned. I think, uh, I think the Waz will, will hopefully do well during the origin period because they won't have too many players going. I mean, probably only Barnett. Or, yeah, Maybe that's, that's Yeah, I it. don't see Egan. Egan that's... was in contention, but I don't see it now. No, no, that won't happen. But like you know, that, that, that's probably it. And even if that doesn't happen, then you pretty much got a, a full strength side. And and when other teams in Sydney and, and Queensland are struggling to field players with all their players coming in and out of Origin sides, mm. that's where New Zealand can can rack up some points against lesser lesser strength sides. And yeah, they got a lot of lot of ground to catch up. Um, I hope it's not a case of second year syndrome because I thought you guys did start really well yeah. into the season and I do rate Web as a coach who's transformed the identity of the Wires. Done some side good signings yeah, as well, yeah, we'll exactly. get to that in a bit, but and yeah, we'll, we'll see we'll see how you guys go. Yeah, um, the Harold Matthews team uh, winning their first winning the comp in the first year. Mm. So the, the strength is there, definitely there. Um, like but a lot of work to do at this point in time. We can look to the future, but uh, right now we've got to focus on the now. A yeah. lot of work to do really. Yeah. Um, I'm missing a few players, but really, they're not the only team that are missing a few players. you just got to really perform on foot. And unfortunately, that last two or three weeks, probably two or three games they could have won. But um, maybe all three they could have won yeah. if they were on song, but wasn't yeah. to be. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, something with the Warriors, some signings as well. Fish Harris, yeah. huge signing there. Yeah. Um, definitely a future leader mm, mm, for and sure, uh, also they've got Jet Cleary uh, Nathan Cleary's brother he was born in New Zealand so mm. potentially could play for the Kiwis if, he, if, he's mm. t- if his career turns out well Yeah. Um, so they've got some good signings they've got some good uh, they've got uh, the foundations right it's just right now it's not clicking at the moment in this season Yeah. Uh, a lot of work to do there and also uh, Zach Lomax going to the Parramatta next year yeah big signing for that yeah uh, that's what Pirates needed like a, a strike outside back um you know, you got to fill in some spots where there's grey areas, but still, still, it's a coach that they need to take it to the next level. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Anyways, guys, that's a wrap for now. Uh, we're going to probably end it because we have to get the hell out of here. The weather's terrible, and got to train to catch. Yeah, we do. That's how life rolls. But anyways, guys, uh, thank you for your time. Until next time, bye for now. It's out. We're out of.